you can still invest in property even though uh, you don't have money. Mm -hmm. You know, yes, at that point of my life, I, w I would say I was privileged. Mm -hmm. I was earning dollars. Yes, I could buy properties here in South Africa with the affordability th uh, through the bank. But when we came back home, I didn't have a job in South Africa. Oh, you know, I had, yes, a portfolio, but it wasn't making us money. Welcome back. I'm the host of the First Time Home Buyer Show, SD Class, and I'm extremely excited for this evening's show. It is our 50th episode of the First Time Home Buyer Show, and I am sitting with a phenomenal woman this evening. But before we get started, we bring you amazing content every weekday this week. We've got Zaman Tungwa Kumalo with the Private Property Podcast live at 7 p.m. on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And of course, we've got Mbali with the Farming Podcast. Are you interested in farming, agriculture? Well, and Bali comes to your screens every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. And last but not least, Chad Viveros travels in Zanzi, Johannesburg, looks at amazing mansions, townhouses, apartments. If you want to take that leap of faith and start investing in property, Chad's show is definitely going to help you reach that. And last but not least, I come to your screens every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. So without further ado, let's get this 50th celebration started. Do not forget, we are giving away amazing cash prizes this evening. I am I'm sitting with a phenomenal woman and what a way to end off my 50th episode and Women's Month with a bang, Sylvia Miloševic. Did I say that right? I love it. You said it perfectly. You got it. You literally you got took it. 10 minutes to try and figure that out. I am so excited to be sitting with you. You have no idea. Firstly, I didn't think you'd respond to my email. Let's start there because you're so busy. You've achieved so much. It is a privilege to be sitting next to you. Thank wow, you. wow, thank you so much. You're getting me shy. But thank you so much. And also, I just want to say a huge, huge congratulations. Thank you. Uh, 50th episode. That is incredible. Yeah, that's very incredible. So, congratulations you so to you. Much. I hope you get to enjoy uh, this momentous moment. Yeah, I think I might just call you back for the 100th episode. Can we do that? I like that. Let's do all the milestones. How about that? Let's, it's let's a do date. the milestones. <laughs> it's I a love date. that. Thank you so much, Sylvia. I have read your bio. It is a hefty. You have achieved and accomplished so much, you know, um, from, let's take it back to where, you know, your upbringing. You come from the township and you've moved, you, you've traveled the world. You've learned from property mentors and property, and my favorite thing about you is that you came back to give it back. I just got goosebumps. I, we don't see that often, right? You started Riches and Beyond, and you're literally the definition of generational wealth, like you're giving back. People. But so yes, let's take it back. You know, you grew up in the township. How did, let's talk about your journey all the way back then to now. Right, right. You know, uh, first of all, thank you. My goodness, you said so amazing things. I'm like, whoa, who is she talking to? But thank you. Uh, you know, yes, I'm well known in the space as this property guru, property developer, TV personality, and you know, like a CEO and founder of Riches and Beyond. But what a lot of people do not know about me is I was born and raised from a beautiful township of Harankua in Pretoria. Mm -hmm. And my mom was a stay-at-home mom. My dad was the only breadwinner at home who afforded us a good life, went to good schools, never had to worry about money, until one day my father came home. And after working for 17 years of his life for BMW, he got fired. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember he, he came into the house, he called the whole family to say, let's go into the living room. I've got something to, to discuss, to, to announce. And as we sat in the living room, he, you know, he said those words, I've been fired. And I remember the terror on my mother's face. You know, I remember thinking to myself, it was just weeks ago, I was talking to my dad, I was 16 at the time, that you know, after my trip, I was gonna go to this university, we had everything planned. And now thinking to myself, how's that even gonna be a possibility now? But the reality is nothing about that day. You know, I remember it felt like walls came crashing down on us on that day, but nothing about that day prepared my family for the next three years of unemployment, mm -hmm. for, for days we would go to bed on empty stomachs. Mm -hmm. You know, I come from a family that had money in a bank account, you not knowing where money was going to come from. And the most painful part uh, for me was 
my dad was not a lazy man. He went out there. He looked for a job. He was just never lucky. Mm. And one day he came home after, you know, being tired of trying and nothing coming through. And he was sitting on his favorite chair. And as we were sitting in the living room, he just started crying. I had never seen my father cry. Mm. And as he was crying, he said some, some, you know, some shattering words. Uh, he said that, I apologize. I apologize to you, my wife. I apologize to you, my children, for I have failed you. You know, the one thing I'm supposed to do as a man, I have failed at doing that. And that broke my heart, looking at my hero, my role model, my dad, you know. Uh, and from that day onwards, he got into the deepest depression. Mm. I got to experience this out of my dad I had never seen before. And his coping mechanism became a bottle of castle and a bottle of lion, and he became alcoholic. Mm. And I don't know if you've been through a time in your life where you felt like life was ripped under your feet and mm. you couldn't do anything about your situation. Yeah. And that's how it felt. So uh, I remember that time at 16, I promised myself, Sylvia, when you grow up, you are never going to rely on anyone to look after you. No rely on a job, mm. a J-O-B, mm. as a source of security. Now, I didn't know what the future held, but I trusted in the future. I had faith, and I didn't even know what the solutions was until I turned the age of 21. Mm. And my parents, for my 21st birthday, they didn't do this massive big 21st birthday. They bought me a book, and it was on property. Mm. So, yeah, that for me was the biggest turning point of my life. Mm. I'm like, wow my aha moment i can now start focusing on property as a vehicle towards financial freedom yes i'll go i had an opportunity to go and work overseas at the same time but the plan was i'll go there work hard and it's great property is one of those things you don't mm. have to be physically here to take care of you know as long as you you get the right support system i can be overseas working money i'm making investing here so basically that's 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 been my journey mm. that's amazing and look at where you are now right i feel like when i look back at my life because i come from a I don't like to be vulnerable on the show, but I come from a very similar background. Mm. And to have a father figure who, you know, has been through something like that, and this is this, it's the man in the family. And to see that happen and to see that crumble in front of you, for me, it motivated me to do better. Yes. And I can then, and it's, and you know, I don't like to do the whole gender thing, the whole man, woman, but I then became the brother, the father, the wow. sister, the mother, everything. Exactly, you have to step up and that's amazing and so let's talk a little bit about your experience overseas, right? Because you said that taught you quite a bit correct, as well. Correct. And how did, how did you manage to even make it there? Like how, because you, <sighs> did you get the opportunity to eventually study? So, not really, well, studied, self-studied property but not from a professional level. Okay. So how the opportunity came about, it was like one of those coincidences. I was working at Monte Casino, he has a casino dealer. Yeah. And uh, during one of the breaks, a supervisor came through and said, guys, you guys are relaxing here, you're going to miss opportunities. We're like, what are you talking about? He's like, there's this uh, agency all the way from the US, they're in Cape Town, running interviews, uh, looking for casino dealers to go and work on cruise ships. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, that sounds amazing. So uh, the next break, I went straight to him, asked him, you know, tell me more. He gave me details. And then I got, I called the agent the very next day and they said, can you come through to Cape Town for an interview tomorrow? Because tomorrow is the cut of day. Mm -hmm. And I said, yes. And as the, I did what a lot of us have been guilty of in the past. Yeah. I was supposed to show up for work, but I went to the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> to the doctor. I went to the doctor, got my last rent's money, flew to Cape Town for the very first time in my life. Yeah. When I got to Cape Town, long line of people waiting, got my opportunity to walk in. When I walked in there, there was this amazing woman, um, blonde hair, blue eyes, you know, a Texan woman. She spoke beautiful American accent. I couldn't even hear some of the words. Yeah. She was saying I was so nervous. And the first question she asked me was, tell me about yourself. And I said, I said I'm, I'm Sylvia. I said, my full name, got to Sylvia Milosh, uh, Miloisani at the time. And I'm 20 years old. And she stopped me. She says, wait, how old are you? I said, I'm 20. She says, did you read the ad for this job? I said, no. She said, you needed to be 21 years old to apply for this position. Yeah. So you don't qualify. Oh, I was so disappointed. But she said, at any rate, it's your interview time slot. Let us continue. So we continued, then I became myself, and I was making jokes, right. demanding high salaries in dollars. Long story short, fast forward two weeks later, I got a call from the agent that I got the job. This position was for 20 people, so they created a 21st uh, yeah, slot, and I had to wait until I turned 21 to go oh, overseas. So okay. that's what it was. So had an incredible opportunity to travel the world. I've been to about 61 different countries around the world, 175 oh. cities. 
I also uh, did a lot of personal development, studied property, but majority of what I learned about property was from the theoretical side mm -hmm. of property investing, read uh, uh, on, from books. And then when I'd come home during vacation, I'll just be buying properties mm. left and right. And having that uh, American salary afforded me a high affordability through our banks in South Africa. Mm. So I was young, I was buying, I was listening to estate agents, I was buying directly from new developers. Fast forward building a portfolio over eight years with a plan that uh, when my husband and I come back to settle in South Africa, we'll have this portfolio to look mm. after us. Mm. But our reality was not that way. Oh, really? When we came home, uh, eight years later, had this portfolio. First thing that happened is that the, estate, the letting agent that we had managing all the, the properties Office. disappeared. They literally ran away with all the tenants' deposits. We also found out they were a flight by night. They were not a oh, legitimate wow. company to start off with. So one didn't know lots of things, how to vet, didn't know much. Everything I knew about investing in property was what I read from books yeah. and put into, in, into practicality. Mm. And now when the tenants realized the vulnerability and, you know, I dealt with some of the tenants who knew more about the law than I did right. and they were ready to play the game. Oh, wow. So it was a tough time. I mean, we, we had to go through lots of evictions. We had tenants who refused to pay. You know, we got court orders, like restraining orders, because <laughs> we tried in every way to get, you know, to, to yeah. fit them and, you know, from the illegal way to learning the hard way that you have to do it legally and it costed us a lot of money and almost became bankrupt. Mm. You know, uh, there's a statistic that says that majority of, of properties that go through the sheriff's auction are property investments gone wrong and we almost became that statistic. Well, you became, yeah. Almost became that statistic. Wow. And I wanted to find out because that's really, firstly, I want to take it back to, because even in your bio, you say you bought properties left and right. Yes. Would you say that you were in a point of privilege because you had, you know, you were earning dollars? Correct. And so because you could come back and obviously buy all these properties. Yes. And I think what, this is just my opinion of riches and beyond, is what you're trying to do for South Africans. That you don't need to necessarily make this money, dollars, euros, pounds. But you, let's, let's buy property left and right as South Africans in South Africa. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, I love that. And also, just to add on to that, you know, you can still invest in property even though uh, you don't have money. Mm -hmm. You know, yes, at that point of my life, I, I would say I was privileged. Mm -hmm. I was earning dollars. Yes, I could buy properties here in South Africa with the affordability th uh, through the bank. But when we came back home, I didn't have a job in South of Africa. Course, you know, yeah. I had yes, a portfolio, but it wasn't making us money. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, fast forward, what happened is that the, we came across a, a property educational program. It was a British company here in South Africa, mm -hmm. educating South Africans on how to invest offshore. Okay. But at this seminar, uh, the, the, the speaker in front of the room, he was talking about different types of strategies that, mm -hmm. you know, we only knew buy and rent, like, mm. you know, buy to let. They said, no, there's about 50 most powerful strategies that you can uh, apply in any country, mm. around, I mean, any country around the world mm. to achieve success in property. There's about a minimum of 10 ways for you to raise money to go into deals. So let's yeah, talk about all these things that you could do in property, was living the lifestyle. And I thought to myself, that man is a genius and mm. I want to be like him. So we, we, we took some of the proceeds from the property we sold. We took a huge leap, a huge leap, mm -hmm. you know, it's like huge leap of faith and invested in ourselves and went all the way to the UK, spent time in the UK, mm -hmm. paid for a mentorship, mm -hmm. got ourselves a mentor from one of the reputable companies there who introduced us to his mastermind team, got to meet some of the top property experts while I was in the mm -hmm. UK, opened up my limited company, uh, set up like, you know, banking facilities, you know, learned so much. He held me by the hand, took me out then taught me everything that mm. I knew about property. But now I had learned it from the UK. Right. It's like, okay, it works in the UK. Now Is it going to work yeah. in South Africa? Mm. So when I came back to South Africa, they paid me, uh, you know, they had other students who had been through the same similar courses who were achieving success mm -hmm. on the ground. And they were like, you know, got some introductions for them to just be of a support system, you mm. know? while I'm putting things into practice, before signing an offer to purchase, yes. having someone to overlook it so I don't make mistakes, mm -hmm. you know. When I go for viewing before buying, having that second eye, that experience, you know, getting that support. Mm -hmm. And uh, as in the first eight years of me investing in property, I did it completely wrong, lost money mm -hmm. in the biggest way. And it took four and a half years to reach a point of what we call financial independency, where we, we're getting sufficient income right. from property to cover our 
living expenses mm -hmm. to cover our lifestyle, mm -hmm. got into buying from auctions, bank repossessed the properties, got into tapping into multi lets, got into doing back to back deals. Uh, you know, I now even done something powerful that in order to grow a portfolio, mm -hmm to the level of building wealth. You can't do it only relying on your money. Mm. You know, you can't look at how much I've got in my pocket yeah. or, or savings in my bank account you, that you need to develop a powerful skill in learning on how to raise money, learning to go into joint venture partnership, yeah. learning to tap into venture capitalism, learning to, to understand what is it that financial institutions are looking for mm -hmm. and, and you know, ma finding the right deals that you're able to put the right proposals mm -hmm. together because that business investors proposal is what's going to get you funding. Had to master all those things plus getting the right knowledge. Mm -hmm. So acquiring a knowledge that a lot of people do not know out there exactly. that then becomes yeah. an exchange for you. So, yeah. I wanted to find out because, you know, you've been through a lot and such, you, you know, moments where you could have been in a point in your life where you lose everything. Yes. You were so close to that. Uh, we were. What was like the biggest lesson? Like, let's narrow it down to just one mm -hmm. big lesson that you learned from, from that moment in your life. I would say this, uh, Essie, and, and this applies to different moments of my life. Mm -hmm. Whenever I stepped into something uh, for the first time that I didn't know much about mm -hmm. and I tackled it myself, mm -hmm. I've pretty much always made mistakes, oh, always yeah. lost money, oh, literally. You know, uh, so I would say the biggest lesson and also what I would call, I don't know, like a, a recipe to my success mm -hmm. has been from those failures, what I've learned is whatever it is that I want to tap into and master, I need to invest in myself first. Mm -hmm. You know, I wanted to become a speaker. I invested in myself. I went for Les Brown. You know, I got to learn from Les Brown, paid a huge amount of money, but it was an investment because I knew by learning how to do public Just speaking, I will get, you know, it's an ROI that I'll exactly. get back. So I went into business with my previous partners, first business I had, didn't know much about that, made mm. biggest mistake that mm. almost killed mm. everything, you know. So from learning that, what did I do? So I learned from that and then, then the next thing I did is sort out the best mentor in the world, Lisa Nichols. Mm. She's a, you know, uh, a global entrepreneur has a business over 49 countries to mention me to do it the right way. So I'm working with Lisa now helping me to build nice. riches and beyond and also tapping, taking this business globally mm -hmm. as well. So every single thing that I want to tap into to in terms of personal growth or financial growth, I've learned the best way to mitigate risk, yeah. to get there faster, invest in a mentor, mm -hmm. invest yeah. in someone who knows much more than the, 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 mm -hmm. the track record mm -hmm. so you can leverage from the experience. And I love what you said earlier, invest in yourself. And I think research is so important. You know, research about anything that you want to take that leap of faith and try and do and, 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 and learn. And especially something, you know, a lot of young adults uh, coming out of university, what they've started doing is just starting their own businesses. Mm. And it could, in most cases, we're following our passion. And it might not necessarily be the degree you just studied, but I think a lot of the t a lot of the time we end up making mistakes a year or two years later is because we lack research in this thing. Yeah. So to the young people at home, I think it's so important that we need to do our research. And just before we carry on, Sylvia, I have a very important question for you. But I just want to remind all the viewers at home, it is the 50th episode of Massive Milestone. For myself, Sylvia's with me this evening. And I just want to remind you, we are giving away 2,500 Rand cash to two lucky winners. We need that special piece of advice for potential first-time homebuyers. That's been our question to our viewers throughout this week, Sylvia. We've been giving away a lot of money. And um, the question is a pivotal piece of advice mm. for a potential first-time homebuyer. What's your advice for that? I would say that don't rush. Mm. Mm. Sometimes we, we get taken away, right? Yeah. I, can, I can afford it. I, you know, I really want it. I've been dreaming about it. You even maybe even have it on your vision board and you made that first property say, this is it, take your time. Mm. You know, view at least 20 of them. And the wow. beautiful thing about viewing multiple properties, it's every single one gives you a, a lesson, mm. you know. By the time you're done with 20, definitely you'll know which one is the exactly. right one to go. You I know? like that, yeah. <laughs> to view 20, and you know on the show, I, I hear a lot of like advice from right. property mentors and moguls and investors. Right. Your, this is the first time I've heard like view 20. I think that's mm. what I'm gonna do. I've only like viewed Try. two. <laughs> you know, my decision, <laughs> You're right, View 20, but someone else also said something so amazing who was on the show once and he was like, drive around the neighborhood in the evening 
Okay. To, yeah. And I was like, that's so smart. Like, go around in the evening, find mm. out, like, are the neighbors making a noise? Is there, like, a little mm. tavern down the road? Right. You know? And People standing by the corner. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Right. On a Friday evening or a Saturday mm. evening. Yeah, so I, that was, that's my piece of advice. I love it. <laughs> we spoke in depth about strategy and how important it is to have a mentor to help you who's been in the game, who helps you. What is Sylvia's strategy? Property strategy wow. to success. So right now, where I am in my life, uh, so I'm into your high density residential development. I'm working on two deals at the moment. For one is in, right across from UJ. It will host about 510 students. The second one is in Arcadia, it will uh, host about 1,400 students. And the l biggest deal that we're busy with now is in Mpumalanga. Mm -hmm. And that's a mega city project. It's an eight billion project that uh, we happen to be part of. Yeah, the, the team that's bringing it to life and working with the, yeah. How can I join? Why not? I join these. I think you should. You know? Yeah, I think you should. <laughs> so, the, yeah, those are the strategies right now. And, and, you know, for me, it's all about reaching the next level. And the beautiful thing is every level I, I reach, then I can go back and say, okay, here's the format. Here's the, yeah. you know? Because yeah. uh, property investing should never be treated as a side thing. Mm -hmm. you, like you, a side hustle. A side hustle. I'm just building it on the side. Mm -mm. You want to treat it as a business that's scalable. Mm -hmm. Whether you're starting with that first time home, you're buying well. Your home is not your investment. We buy our first home, that's fine. You can buy that. But yeah. also maybe second to that, buy your first property investment mm -hmm. that's making you money from day one. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we start building it. Start with mm -hmm. one. Get the second one. Maybe from the time, I mean, by the time you get the third one, can we maybe escalate the strategy? Can we now start tapping into multi -lets? Mm -hmm. When you're in multi you're able to leverage a lot from that. You can take out some of the equity to now start reinvesting in your mm -hmm. blocks of flats, mm -hmm. you know? So that's how you, it, it should be about continuous learning. It should be about continuous growth. And that's how you get to the levels of building a legacy that lives beyond your lifetime. Exactly. And that's While you're enjoying the money right now. While you're enjoying the money now. <laughs> And that was actually, I had I have so many questions for you. My next question was going to be something around the lines of, you're a mentor yourself. Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. What is like the first piece of advice you would give a young adult coming in, first time in property, I know nothing. I don't even have my first home. What piece of advice would you give someone? You know, um, as a mentor, when I start working with anyone, whether they're young, they're old, because you, you, you get matured people who have yes. not even started as yet, but particularly for the young people, would be goals. What's your goal? You know, mm. what, what is your goal? Where, where do you see yourself uh, six months from now, two years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now in terms of property, mm. in terms of property investing, property acquisition? Let's start from there. And once you've established, you say, wow, uh, you know, in, in a year from now, I'd like to own one or two yeah. uh, buy to lets that are investment. Okay, now I once know. we've got the goal, we start working on the goal. Mm -hmm. it, it should all, the foundation for, for all of it is the goal and the why. Why are you starting? Mm -hmm. So, because having goals and having a why, these are the things that are going to get you there. Exactly. Because now you've made a commitment to yourself. And it, that will hold you accountable. Yes. That's what's going to get you back on track. But if we don't have goals or, or why we're even doing it in the first place, then it will just be a exactly. nice, a nice to have yeah. or a nice just to nice do. To, <laughs> just to have. And I think that's a piece of like homework for all the viewers watching mm -hmm. the show. If you do not know your why yet, if you're so excited, you're ready to invest in property, you've watched all our shows, but you don't know why, or you don't have a short-term or long-term goal. I think mm -hmm. this is something especially young adults need to start thinking about right now. So I also want to go back to, um, we spoke about you being a mentor and a piece of advice mm -hmm. that you would give first time homebuyers or potential investors in the future. But now I want to find out from you, uh, I know you did the, the program in the UK and that kind of inspired Riches and Beyond, correct? Correct, absolutely. I want to know a little bit more about what you are doing because I spoke, mm -hmm. I was like rambling in the beginning because mm -hmm. I love what you're doing with Riches and Beyond. But yes. I'd like for you to tell the viewers in depth your goal. Mm -hmm. What is Sylvia's goal? Oh, I love it. You know, it's, it's, it's goal slash uh, purpose yeah. slash passion mm -hmm. is that, um, whew, it's, a, it's, a, it's a deep one. Mm -hmm. It's a deep one. It's that, um, you know, I come from, as I, I told my story about my dad, someone who worked for 17 years of their lives and just like that, them losing their job and that changing our lives drastically. So 
that I, I, I believe uh, sort of crafted my mission and purpose and why I'm doing what I'm doing today. And it has everything to do with transformation. It's got everything to do with uh, teaching an everyday person, a young person at home right now, you know, a, a mom right now who wants to gain her own independence and take care of her own finances. You know, a, 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 a man who is the breadwinner of a, a family who's feeling like my salary is just not enough to cover all the overheads. I feel like I'm just, you know, living, I'm, I'm, I'm caught in the red race and I just can't find a way out of this. Someone who's feeling stuck like there's just not enough, enough money, enough finances to go by and I'm looking for solutions. So mastering and, and learning about property investing and my mission and purpose is educating more and more people that you can take charge of your financial future that you can create your own economy that you're not affected by the job by the economy by what's happening around us because you now learn a powerful skill of knowing how to create money for yourself when you start mastering skill, uh, strategies such as your capital flip, mm -hmm. where you're buying below market value, you fix to sell and make a profit, mm -hmm. and you've done the first one successfully, you now have the blueprint. Mm -hmm. You've got the system. All you do is go back and do the very same thing. You now know how to create 100000 If you're indebted and your credit card is at 100000 and it's, it's taken you three years to cover up to 20000 you still have 80000 of a mountainous yeah. debt and it's giving you so much stress. All you need to do is you learn this once, you're going to apply it. Less than six months, you can easily make a minimum profit of 100,000, yeah. settle off that credit card. Mm. If you say, I would love for my child to go to a private school, to a Crawford, so they can get a better life than yeah. I did, you know, yeah. I want it better for them. So we start working this year. We, we learn, you, you learn these things, you go and buy it below market value, you fix, you sell, bang. You've made 100000 you can pay for the whole school fees for the whole year. Exactly. You don't have to save for seven years to take your children to Disneyland. Yeah. You just, this is what I'm talking about, creating your own financial economy, creating money for yourself. And what I, why I always say that what you're doing is like generational wealth or even with, it's generational knowledge as well. Right. Because whoever you are now mentoring goes home to the township, to the Kasi, and they just, they're telling their, their cousin, their uncle, right. and they, they're sharing this knowledge right. and then, you know, more people come, more people want to learn. Um, about this and that is how we grow as a community and I that's exactly it. what I believe. I love it it's, and that's the largest uh, you know uh, legacy to mm -hmm. say have you changed lives mm -hmm. you know not only just your own lives and also with that knowledge you know you they say charity begins at home yeah. we start at home once you've learned it can we now teach our children exactly. so yeah go to school study get those degrees but while you're busy studying and getting those degrees and working mm -hmm. let's start building on yeah. the side you know let's build that business right. that's going to take care of us so even us while we're doing it and building it we want to make sure that when we're going to pass it over we're passing it over to people who are going to be capable yeah. of taking it forward mm -hmm. and once we learn it now we take it to the community now you know we take it as far as we can mm -hmm. And that's how we change the landscape and that's how we, 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 we transform minds exactly. and hearts and yeah. I agree. I want to take it, I want to bring it back to Women's Month. Mm. Um, and I want to know what your vision for women in property is. Wow, my vision for, for women in, in property mm. is wow. Can you imagine? And I want you to imagine this, Esty. Yeah. You know, we're in 2021. Imagine 2031. And, you know, we, we hear that there's about 20, 50 property funds owned by, by women, yeah. you know, yeah. and women from all walks of life, not just the privileged one, but like it is possible, you know, it is possible. I feel like uh, property is still a male dominated mm. space mm. that uh, we, we need lots of the Sylvia's and the, the Estes, yeah. you know, we, we need lots of that. And, and that's how we, we also become role models for the young ones, because when they see more of us and they see it's possible because exactly. you look like them, you sound like them. So if you can do it, they can do it too. Yeah. I want to because I know we're, we're running out of time, but I want to know from you, because of course, that's a beautiful um, image a beautiful picture in 2031 you know we have all these these women taking over the property mm -hmm. property market how can we get there Sylvia? Mm, i love that oof that thank you for that question because <laughs> that's why i do what i'm doing mm -hmm. you know riches and beyond we've had over forty thousand students mm -hmm. uh literally over 40 we've helped raise 
from a, we've helped a student raise over half a billion worth of funding towards yeah. their deals. And now we've got this magnificent and a powerful platform where we're now able to reach the masses. And that's with the TV show, the property game show yeah. that I'm sharing with yeah. Proverb, where we have our students coming in to sharing their stories, their journeys, their mm. successes, mm. where they were from, what property is doing for them. So the more people see this show, the more mm. seeds are planted, the more people's eyes are opening to say, wow, yeah. there are possibilities. Wow, if they can do it. You know, mm. we had a powerful lady this week, Sueleni, mm. who comes from Emma Kayas in KwaZulu Natal, mm. where, you know, where she grew up from, uh, you were only limited to, to, to go into school. If you're lucky, you even have a metric certificate, right. where, where, where you're dreaming about making it big in the world. Everyone loves it and says, keep on dreaming, yeah. you know? To, to her sharing a powerful story on how she's making money in property and having investors. And I'm like, wow. So when more people see this and they see people like Sueleni who just like them, sound like them, and they're making it, mm. that's, how we, that's how we get to 20, 50 property funds 10 years from there now. There we go. That's, that's the dedication. The <laughs> I love that. And I want to find out from you, Sylvia, what does generational wealth mm. mean to you? Mm. So... Generational wealth, what that means to me, and I'll take it back. My great-great-grandfather, he started from zero. <laughs> yeah. My grandfather, he started from zero. My father started from zero. I would love for my children to start from something. Mm. And I would love for their children. I would love that a hundred years from now, my great-great-great-grandson and daughters they should be in their property space, building skyscrapers, mm. and it's all because their grandmother, 100 years ago, believed in herself. Mm. That's what generational wealth is. Mm. I love that. And I think that's something that we all need to work to, towards. And we can, and with we can. knowledge like this, accessible to all of us, and with the know, internet, we with we educational. Have, yes. we have, we're so privileged, actually. Um, that's no excuse. Our grandmothers and our mothers were back in the day. 100%, and yeah, that's why we should take advantage. Um, I said, yes, this is the first time home by a show. And I love that you kept reiterating the fact that when people see that we can do it, a little colored girl in the township mm -hmm. in Cape Town believes because I'm doing it. They, you know, they see people who look like them, sound like them, and that's how people believe in themselves. Right. You told me that the, the one push was your 21st birthday in that book. Yes. So what? Because Sylvia, you're so committed to what you do. Mm. You wake up every morning mm. and you continue to thrive and you mm. continue to... Mm. And yes, of course you are doing it to build a generational legacy mm. for people, uh, for, for our kids mm. that we're leaving behind. But I'm sure there are mornings where you just can't. Where today you feel like this is heavy, you know, the energy right. is awful. Today. Right. What mm. keeps Sylvia motivated? Mm. You know, I give myself a lot of grace. Mm. I've learned to develop a a good relationship with myself yeah, you be know kind to yourself. be kind to myself mm. to listen to myself and when i don't feel like it when i'm feeling down if i feel like crying i allow myself to cry yeah. if i feel really tired i say uh -uh, we gotta stop yeah. it's not nothing will happen we gotta stop let's take a break so self-care and grace giving yourself grace has it yeah, it goes a long way. So I'm very kind to myself. Yes. I've learned to I've learned to do that. I wasn't it wasn't always that way, but I've learned to do that. And exactly. that's that's keeping me going. As a result of that, I've got lots of energy with doing the things that I'm doing because mm -hmm. I always know that when it comes through a certain level, my my everything, my intuition, everything starts saying, ah ah, Sylvia, <laughs> break time for us. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> yeah. amazing. Grace and self care. Mm. I'll say those are the biggest thing, and I allow myself to feel things. And to not beat yourself up for doing that and for taking the time. Hundred percent self talk. Mm. I pay a lot of attention to that, mm. you know, because I've learned something powerful that I am not my brain. This sixty thousand thoughts that goes through my brain yeah. every—that's not who I am. It's just my brain going cha 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 cha. But yeah. there's Sylvia and there's the brain. And I can choose the, 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 the thoughts that come yeah. through. And the ones that are not serving me, I'm like, ah, thank you for sharing information, but no, I don't welcome you. you know? and, that, and you know, that, that, that can't come easy to a lot of people, but that comes from learning to invest in yourself. That's it. Taking the time. Taking the you time. You would never know that you need to do something like that if you did not invest. 100%. And know who Sylvia is at the core. I, I love that you said that personal development has a huge, huge, huge uh, part in success. Yep. You know, uh, even with the property game show, I don't know if you've watched it. Mm. Uh, it's a two two part, uh, you know, uh, show. Yeah. It's about personal development and it's also about property investment because I've one thing I've seen from 
my journey as a property mentor mm. is the students who become successful mm. are the ones who have the right mental attitude are the ones who are like mentally tough and have it some people have it naturally mm. others they have to learn that whole personal development thing but I'll, I'll tell you people who come in and become successful they had the right mindset to begin with yeah at the beginning so and investing in that really is very important mm. and it's for free you can go on youtube it's like literally you don't have to pay huge amounts of money for that <laughs> that's so true yeah. yeah thank you so much sylvia i absolutely enjoyed this i I do want to do this again. I believe that we should, because I know that you, you, we just spoke about your goals. And I feel that once you've achieved and obtained you know, these goals is when we should have another sit down. Because again, it's about educating and showing people that this is possible. I love it. I'd love so to. Amazing. Thank you. It was amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank so much, you. Sylvia. And for coming to the 50th episode. Yes. I'm so excited. So happy for you. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. Happy I'll see for you, you again at the 100th episode. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> thank you. We are definitely inspired, motivated and driven. And thank you once again to Silvio Melashevic for showing us that we too can reach our dreams. And as you've heard, tonight is extra special. We're celebrating a whopping 5-0, as you can see behind me. Of course, the aim of the show is to chat to inspiring property investors, first time home buyers, because if they can do it, so can we. And on that note of being excited and inspired, and driven and motivated I would like to share some of the advice that you guys gave us on Facebook and let's start off with the first piece of advice from Tintualo Mulambo before you get emotionally attached to a beautiful house check your monthly budget to determine the amount that you can afford make sure your monthly housing costs including taxes and insurance is not going to be more than 25% of your monthly take-home pay. That was the amazing advice from Tim Swalo. And one more just before we announce the winners of the 2,500 Rand this evening, we've got Nzwabantu Moy who says, think about what you want and what you need. Be specific with online searches and when talking to agents. Work with well-known agencies. They all know the area and properties on the market and will be able to give you really good advice. Thank you so much to those two absolutely amazing advice given from our viewers at home. Thank you so much to everyone who's participated in the competition and given us that absolutely amazing advice that we needed from you for any potential first time home buyer. But now we reach the most exciting part of the show where we give two lucky winners 2,500 Rand cash. Our first winner is Rafilwe Precious Malebane. I would like to take a moment and quickly read some of the advice Rafilwe has shared with us. Rafilwe says, the first thing is to have an idea of what you can afford, very important Rafilwe, and save up for a deposit so that your bond payments will be lower. Please head out to our comment section and see more of what Rafilwe shared with us. Rafilwe Malebane, you are our first lucky winner. DM us to claim that prize. And that's not all, our second winner for tonight's grand prize of 2,500 Rand is another drum roll, please, Queen Taco. Queen, thank you so much for your absolutely amazing advice. I'd like to share a little something from Queen, and she says, research about the area. We talk about that often on the show. Do your research before you make that big property investment. Thank you so much to everyone at home, those who participated in the competition. Thank you to those who helped me celebrate our 50th milestone. And to our lucky winners, don't forget DMI to claim your prize here is to 100 episodes we'll see you guys every wednesday at 8 p.m live on facebook instagram and youtube let's go <laughs> cheers here's to 100 episodes see you guys soon take care and stay safe